Uh, we're here previewing Darksiders, and I noticed the game is a lot brighter than you would think a game like, named Darksiders would be. Uh, what was the intention of that? Well, originally we were going to call it Brightsiders, but it sounded totally weird. So, uh, no, uh, you know, it really comes through playing and testing the game. It's like uh, we do want to strike that balance where we have nice, dark, atmospheric settings. But, you know, at some point you do need to watch out that it's not so dark that you can't figure out where you're supposed to go. And so, you know, over time we started to really work um, a lot more color into the game and a lot more. Uh, you know, lighting as, and even as our tech came online, we had more advanced lighting options. And so uh, we did brighten it up quite a bit. And it's just a lot easier to play and a lot better looking, honestly. So, so despite the title. So I won't have to adjust my uh, the color of my screen beforehand like you always do with those games? No, but you can if you want to. The slider's there, you know, move the gamma up or whatever. Okay. Uh, you work with Mark Hamill, who's a character named The Watcher. Uh, do you have any good Star Wars stories that he told you? Um, you know, just I, I, won't, I won't get in, into anything specific, but I will say that, you know, obviously I grew up with Star Wars and, and meeting Mark Hamill was really awesome for me. And, and of course, he had lots of stories to tell about his, uh, you know, starting out and like starting out as a young actor and his early experiences on the set and things like that. Um, it was just a blast talking to him. And he really um, just got the character of the Watcher like better than I could have hoped. I mean, he just nailed it on on the first take almost every single time. He just blew us away. So uh, we actually wrapped pretty fast with him, and then he had lots of time to to tell his stories and just hang out, which was really cool. Nice. How long how long did it take him to uh, complete the voice work? Just a few hours, honestly. Considering the guy is like in the entire game. I mean, he seriously blasted it out. It was amazing. He's like a machine. Okay, um, Xbox 360 didn't get games like Demon's Soul, and it's not going to get God of War 3. Do you think you can tap into that fantasy genre that's kind of, you know, been lacking on Xbox 360? Absolutely. I mean, that that's definitely one of our hopes. Um, we, we sort of saw that hole, too, and we, we just, it, just not only on, on con, like, a, any specific console, like, in the game industry as a whole, there aren't that many new um adventure titles coming into existence these days it's usually sequels to other games so uh, we really want uh, more uh, adventure game ips out there and so you know we're putting this one out there and hopefully it'll sort of fill that void that players have i noticed the uh, health is kind of different there's you know four small skulls at the top so far in, in the game we're playing and a health bar it's a combination of like seems like a little bit of zelda hearts and a health bar uh can you explain that and also what can you spend your currency on so basically, you know, each one of those uh, skulls gives you uh, another health bar, if you will. And so, you know, you start off, it's one of the things you'll want to upgrade as much as possible. Uh, when you have, the cool thing about an adventure game is that when you get stuck, you know, you might be playing an action game and get stuck and just not be able to beat it and you just stop playing it. And in most adventure games, like Darksiders, you can just go elsewhere. You can uh, kill a bunch of creatures for souls, and then with those, you can upgrade your health. You can buy new items. Um, there's a gun you can get. There's uh, some bigger guns that are like pick up and drop weapons. There's throwing blades. There's scythes. There's gauntlets where you could fight with your bare hands. And all of these uh, weapons, a lot of them, uh, level up as you use them so they'll get stronger over time so using all of these things you'll eventually get to the point where you can overcome pretty much any obstacle in the game and that's what's really cool about adventure games and even you know rpgs uh, and th these are all elements we love and when we tried to put in the game okay this may be touching on the same stuff but how's your character transformed throughout the game so you know obviously you get stronger and stronger you get more health over time but also um you get um weapon enhancements that actually allow you to in addition to the the leveling of the weapon it actually allows you to add new properties to the weapon like setting creatures on fire poisoning them things like that um giving you more uh armor um and then in addition to that there are skills which you can use like blade geyser and a lot of the wrath abilities um and in addition to that the chaos eater which is your your main sword as you build up chaos it actually allows war to physically transform. That's probably the most dramatic transformation where you become uh, this being of pure chaos and rage, and uh, it's basically like this cool-looking demon. And you can run around in that form for a short time. You're completely invulnerable, and you just destroy everything. So, All right, speaking of uh, enemy setting enemies on fire, uh, what's your coolest uh, finishing move? We noticed a lot of finishing moves uh, in the game so far. And uh, what's your favorite one? And what's your favorite enemy? We noticed a lot of enemies, too, that uh, have unique designs. 
Um, so there's a creature uh, you fight called the Jailer at, at some point, and he's he's just this giant mass of rotting cadavers, and, like, he's got cages swinging off him. And he'll actually... The cages are filled with, with the bones of his slain enemies, and when he slams the cages on the ground, the, the skeletons pop out and fight you and stuff. So um, he's he's probably my favorite enemy. I just feel like he's so cool-looking, and he's so fun to fight. you got to use the crossblade uh, to fight him. He's in the Twilight Cathedral where you get the crossblade. Um, Good strategy tip. All right, I'll write yeah. that down. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as far as, like, the best finishing move, uh, I really enjoy his finishing move as well, although there's all kinds of uh, hilarious ones. Great. Uh, what can we expect from the game length since it's a single-player game? You know, we've we've had people take anywhere from like 16, 17, 18 hours to 25 hours to beat it, which is longer actually than what we anticipated. So it really depends on how much exploration you do and how good you are at puzzles, because there's actually quite a lot of puzzles in the game that are going to surprise people. Cool. Uh, and the final question is, when does it release? It'll be out uh, January 5th. So it's right around the corner. Check it out. All right, looking forward to it. And that's uh, everything from Darksiders.